Hello and welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. This month I'm talking about child ballads, which just to be clear are ballads collected by folklorist Francis James Child in the 19th century, not ballads for children. Anyway, one thing that I like about some of these ballads is that they have female protagonists who are very proactive and take an active role in whatever their own story is, and it doesn't always end well, but women in ballads are not all damsels in distress. You see a lot that make choices and play some kind of a role in the outcome of their own story. And there are some that are very clever about it and do some really interesting things. So my topic for today is child ballads about very clever women. Number one on my list is number one. Ballad number one, Riddles Wisely Expounded. So this is a story that has two main variants. Like there's more than two, but the story goes one of two ways. In either case, there is this family, a mother and her three daughters, and a stranger comes to their door and wants to stay the night, and they agree to let him. The youngest daughter sleeps with him that night, which of course in that society would have been very taboo and one does not do that without being married. And in the morning, Here's where it splits off into two variants. In one of them, she's like, you're gonna marry me, right? And he's like, if you can answer my riddles. And in the other variant, they wake up in the morning and he's like, oh, by the way, I'm the devil and I'm here for your soul and I'm gonna take you to hell if you can't answer these riddles. In either case, you've got this young woman who now has to answer a series of riddles in order to either save her soul or to marry the guy that she wants to marry. And she succeeds. There are different versions of the riddles and, you know, which ones are asked and what the answers are and whatnot, but she answers them all accurately and gets what she wants in the end. So I think that she's a really interesting character. I love how she's put to the test and just, you know, rises to the challenge and is able to figure out all of these, like, weird questions that she's being asked. I mean, obviously it's not a great situation and the version where it's the devil who's here for her soul is very not theologically accurate, but you know what, we're gonna give it a pass on that because I love the part where she's answering the riddles. And next up on my list is child ballad number four, Lady Isabel and the Elf Knight. There are several ballads where an elf knight, as in a knight, like knight in shining armor, who's also an elf, is a main character. And usually the elf knight is, at the very least, kind of dangerous. The fair folk in old ballads are not Tinkerbell type fairies or Christmas elves or whatever, they are inhuman and dangerous and not to be messed with. And of course our protagonist messes with them. Specifically she's looking out her window watching this elfin knight as he's blowing on his horn and she's like, I kind of wish he were here and, you know, sleeping next to me. And so he shows up and he's like, let's go to the forest together. And she goes with him. And when they reach a certain place in the forest, often a body of water, there are, again, different variants, and sometimes it's not specified to be a body of water, but often it is. He then tells her that he has murdered other women at that spot and intends to do the same to her. She decides to uh, not let that happen. And the way that she avoids that happening to her, in some versions, he tells her to take off her fine clothing before he drowns her and she tells him to turn around so that he won't see her naked, and when he does that, she pushes him in. In other versions, she lulls him to sleep. She's like, you know, let's take a rest first, and you can lay your head on my lap, and then when he's asleep, she takes his sword and stabs him with it. But regardless, he lures her into this remote spot in the woods intending to murder her, and she instead turns the tables on him. Ballad number 96 is titled The Gay Goshawk. The Goshawk is a bird, and this guy in Scotland, sometimes it's the king of Scotland, sometimes just a random guy. He sends this bird to his lover in England, who is sometimes an English princess, but sometimes just an ordinary girl. And he sends it with a message. And the message basically says, I can't live without you, please marry me. The problem is that her parents do not want her to marry this guy. And so she goes and asks for a favor. They tell her she can't marry the guy, but she says, no, 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 that's not what I was going to ask. If I die, she says, bury me in Scotland. And she gives specific information on where she wants to be buried and what they should do and everything. And they say, okay, yeah, if you die, we'll bury you in Scotland. She then fakes her own death in a way that's very reminiscent of Juliet from Romeo and Juliet. 
and when they get to the place in Scotland where the wake is supposed to be held, her lover is waiting there to meet her as she wakes up. And so she turns to her brothers who have been sent, you know, to take her body to the place where it's supposed to be buried, and she tells them, ha ha, yeah, not dead, marrying the sky, bye. Number 252 is another one that deals with forbidden love and a woman who has a very clever plan to marry the guy that she likes, whether her parents approve or not. This one is about a noblewoman who falls in love with the kitchen boy, and she knows that her father would never allow her to marry a servant. So what she does is she pays for a ship to be built, and she has him dress in fine clothes and go sailing on the ship and then arrive at the castle claiming to be a wealthy squire. And there are some misadventures along the way and sometimes a test of loyalty, but regardless, in the end her father is like, oh, handsome squire wants to marry my daughter, yes, please! And she's like, I'm not gonna tell him it's the kitchen boy. <laughs> sometimes she does, in some versions, when her baby is being christened, so, you know, uh, a little bit after the wedding, she tells the father, by the way, do you know who my husband is? And at that point, he doesn't really care. But regardless, it's, it's a story about a woman who wants to marry someone who she absolutely is forbidden from marrying and comes up with a clever plan to get her father to go along with it. I kind of wonder if ballad number 106, The Famous Flower of Serving Men, has anything to do with Shakespeare's Twelfth Night, because it's a very, very similar story. There's a young woman who finds herself alone with her husband murdered, and she disguises herself as a man and goes to work for the king. And then when she thinks that she's alone with nobody listening, she plays on a lute, which is a kind of musical instrument, and sings her story. And this old guy overhears and tells the king, who then figures out what's going on and asks her to marry him. It's a very similar story, I think, to Viola from Twelfth Night, and so I kind of wonder, like, if Shakespeare was familiar with that ballad and if he took any inspiration from that. I might need to look that up and make another video at some point about uh, whether there is, you know, any connection between those two. But regardless, this girl, when she sees that her whole life has kind of crumbled all around her and her husband is dead and she can't go home and whatnot, she doesn't just give up. She comes up with, you know, a way to keep moving forward and to take care of herself, and so I like that. And these are just a few of the ones that stand out to me. There are plenty of ballads that are about quick-thinking and resilient young women who really do not just let life happen around them, don't let themselves be damsels in distress, and so I just wanted to highlight a couple of them today. Anyway, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you liked it and you want to see more from me, be sure to subscribe. I post new videos on Mondays and Thursdays.